are welcome to this overview of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, Everything Written About Me. Jesus' followers had become saddened following his crucifixion. Now, let's look at some of the kinds of evidence for his resurrection. In this chapter, we shall see how Jesus' followers presumed that he was dead forever followed by an unexpected reversal of circumstances. When Jesus appears to a second party, not the apostles, then invites these to examine the scripture, before he appears to the first party, his apostles. This leads to doubters testifying about Jesus' resurrection. Jesus blesses them, and they worship him. Now, they presumed that Jesus was dead. This occurred in approximately the 17th of the month of Nisan. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Now this event, we believe, occurred first day of the week, after about 6 a.m. our time, Sunday, April 5th of the year A.D. 33. Spices were meant for odor control. Although the tomb was located about 2,000 feet above sea level in a cool environment. Now we have to deal with the fact that the tomb door was open. And to consider some possible explanations. Perhaps robbers had broken in seeking valuables. Or other disciples had broken into the tomb to steal Jesus' corpse. Or the authorities themselves broke in to remove Jesus' body. Well, some suggest that Angels opened it to allow Jesus to come out. Others that angels opened it to allow the disciples to go in. Perhaps no one had shut the tomb in the first place. Which of these explanations seems the most plausible to you? Well, besides the fact of the open tomb, we must deal with the empty tomb. Are there any explanations for why Jesus' body was no longer there? Well, some suggest that Jesus' disciples had stolen the body in order to fake his resurrection, a kind of Passover plot. Perhaps his family members came and took the body to bury it elsewhere. Did Jesus survive the crucifixion? and quietly let himself out of the tomb? Some denominations suggest that Jesus was only an angel, not a real human, so he simply vanished. Perhaps the women went to a wrong tomb that was empty. But then there are those who assert that Jesus had risen from death back to life and had left the tomb. Which of these explanations seems most plausible to you? An unexpected reversal. Whilst they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living one amongst the dead? Throughout Scripture, angels appear in the form of human beings, usually young men. And the living one is Jesus, a title given to him in the book of Revelation. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners to be crucified, and on the third day to be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Now, 
Where did Jesus say that he was to be crucified? In Luke 9.22, he only said he would suffer. And in Matthew, it says crucified, but that was after the fact. It's simple logic that suffer and crucify were synonymous in this case. To be raised again does not suggest that Jesus had been raised a first time earlier. Rather, it means to come back to life. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others, but they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. The strips of linen were from the cloth with which Jesus' body had been wrapped. Now remember, they did not believe, but they knew that evidence had to be evaluated. Was the body in fact missing? And he was wondering about this, for evidence must be interpreted. What does it mean? What can we validly deduce? Well, Jesus, before coming to the apostles, appears to a second party. That same day, two of them were going to a village, talking with each other about everything that had happened. Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk? Now, Luke's noting that they were kept from recognizing him is a theological message. We shall return to this. Two of them, two of whom? Two of disciples, two strangers, two followers of Jesus who were not apostles. And what was it that kept them from recognizing him? Jesus, they said, was a prophet powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Now, what is a prophet? A prophet is one who speaks about God and also acts powerfully in some way to confirm that he speaks for God. Religions that are started by prophets cannot demonstrate that their prophet acted powerfully. To redeem has two aspects. One, to pay a price, and secondly, to set free, especially in the case of a slave. In the case of Israel, they were waiting to be set free by Messiah from their persecutors and overlords. Jesus invites these folk to examine the scripture. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself, that is, throughout the scriptures, not necessarily every individual book. Where does it say that Messiah would suffer? It doesn't. It said that the servant of the Lord would suffer. But then we learn that the servant of the Lord is, in fact, the Messiah. Scripture, we understand, includes the the books attributed to Moses and the other prophets. Technically, the New Testament is not scripture, but rather the eyewitness accounts to the fulfillment of scripture. Whilst Jesus was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks for it, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. What Christian bread ritual can open folks' eyes to who Jesus is? Again, this is theological messaging by Luke. 
those who participate in the breaking of bread in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ come to understand, to recognize who he is. Thus, it is not surprising that throughout the centuries, the Eucharist, the Lord's table, the communion service, was the center of Christian worship. Even the New Testament declares that as often as you do this, you declare the Lord's death, you preach the gospel. Now, why did Jesus disappear? Well, they no longer needed to see him, certainly. They asked at each other, Were not our hearts burning within us whilst he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There the two told what had happened. Now, how is a burning heart important? Yes, there are historical and logical reasons for believing the scriptures. There is also an emotional dimension. Scripture convinces us, and we love the message. And how are the scriptures important? While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood amongst them and said to them, Peace be with you. Shalom Aleichem. Salam Aleikum. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones. The peace greeting is a blessing asking God's peace. Evil spirits do not bless, they curse. You might wish to discuss amongst yourselves. Do ghosts exist? Many say they do not. So, the doubters now begin to testify about Jesus risen from death. He said to them, This is what I told you whilst I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He had opened their eyes so they could see him. Now he opens their minds. The importance of the mind. This is where we understand. And only if we understand the scriptures are we able to interpret the New Testament. The scriptures are now defined as the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. That is, the Hebrew Bible. These evangelists are on their way to share this message with thousands of others. Jesus told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. What did Jesus suffer? He had suffered insults, beatings and crucifixions, besides abandonment by his own disciples. Now, what are sins? Everything we do against God's laws is sin. Bad habits are not necessarily sin. They're just not wise. Now, let's consider seven of many other free benefits of having faith in Jesus. First, as we've just learned from Jesus himself, God forgives everything we ever did. God adopts us into his permanent family. His Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us and amongst us. God always guides us everywhere we have to go. God provides all that we need and ask. God welcomes us into everlasting life. And he promises to raise us back to life at Jesus' return. Let's look at two sides of a coin, to repent and to believe. To repent means to renounce our old beliefs and our former bad deeds and to begin obeying new beliefs and performing new deeds. 
To believe also has two aspects. First, it means to trust in God's promises, and secondly, to remain loyal to Jesus. Now, many Bible verses will employ one of these terms or the other whilst implying both of them. Now, if we are living an immoral lifestyle, then we have not repented. And if we stop believing in Jesus, then we are lost and will perish. So, repent and believe the good news. Power from on high. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Now, a witness is someone who saw what happened. Thus, the apostles saw Jesus crucified and now risen, and they remain the witnesses. You and I are not witnesses to the death and resurrection of Jesus. We are only witnesses to the change that the Holy Spirit has made in us. And what was it that the Father had promised? The indwelling Holy Spirit. And what is the power? This is supernatural ability to serve others beyond our own knowledge and skills. This power is given to every Christian believer who obeys Jesus. Lastly, Jesus blesses the apostles and they worship him. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Whilst he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Notice the sequence. Blessing leads to joy, resulting in praise. Now, in the temple, this story is continued in the book of Acts. Please read it. So, what truths can you affirm from the passage that we studied? What promises can you claim? And what commands will you obey? Discuss this amongst yourselves. Mm -hmm.